So, it's the next show. It's Stephen and Rebecca at iPhotography. Are you looking forward to today's show? I am very excited for today's show. This is great. This is great. This is something that can be broken. I say broken from ranks. We don't necessarily have a kind of a pattern of what we do every week. But this is a little podcast. And it may not be necessarily that long. But there's a lot of funny stories from around the world about photography. Um, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't sure. I, I would have thought after years and years of people being photographers. And certainly, you know, I'm sure we've got stories that we can tell. But these are ones I went specifically hunting for online. Um, just to give us a bit of a lighter laugh at the world of photography. Someone that's, else's expense rather well, than ours. that's so it. Once. As opposed to kind of sharing our deepest and worrying <laughs> memories of when we've embarrassed ourselves by falling over something or other. This was the opportunity for anonymous people to do it. <laughs> so, I mean, this this is great because photography, you know, is a bit of a gift and, you know, it can give us these hilarious moments that, I mean, they may sound like they're too good to be true. And I've done my best to vet that these are real Um you know, but it's gone from the internet, so you've got to take everything with a pinch of salt in a way. So I've not told you about any of these. No, no. Disclosure, but this, this is totally kind of first time that Rebecca will hear these. So these are stories that I found from online that are about interactions with photographers or clients or whatnot. And if you've got any stories like this, if anything funny has ever happened to you um, that you don't mind sharing, obviously, then get in touch. You know, we can kind of make this maybe like a rolling story and we can do another show yeah. with, uh, with listener um comments and stories i think that'd be absolutely fantastic that would be good so yeah so these are anonymous okay so there's no names that are attached to this so if anybody's ever listening you'll only ever know it was you if it actually happened to you but i've got like yeah a series of different kind of interactions mishaps and stories etc and i'll try and role play it a little bit for you so you can kind of get the whole vibe of it so excited for this this is it do you want a wig (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> this would only work well on the YouTube version if you're listening to this me wearing a wig is utterly pointless <laughs> have you got a Not wig with me. you? Uh, no remember <laughs> when you pondered for a second we have a sombrero <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> well when we have kind of like you know Mexican Spanish day then, then yeah we then, can wear yes. that okay. but anyway story one I work as a photographer where I um, take and print out photos on site uh, on demand parties so the print comes out and the girl who's taken, the, who's got the picture says, oh, good, I look awful. Delete it, delete it. And the photographer says, I can't. And the girl says, no, seriously, delete it. She's like, no, I can't. It's paper. It's real. <laughs> 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 I saw it and I thought, I just connect with that so much straight away. Because people just instantly think everything is digital. <laughs> it's like, yeah. but no, just delete the paper. <laughs> Shred it. Not going to happen. Has anyone ever told you to delete a picture of yours? That you've taken um, of somebody else. No, no one's ever told me to delete it. I do, so I do tend to when I edit my images because I'll send them across in the contact sheet. I will edit one just so they know what the final edit will oh, look right, like. Yeah. And I've had people come back in touch and say, "Oh, I really don't like that one." <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. I think people look at it if it's you in a picture. People look at it as what yeah. do I look like rather than what does the photo look like. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I can look at the theatrics of it. There, they think, "Oh." I've my face looks weird in that one. <laughs> so yeah, I do get that quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I think and it's, it's hard to kind of separate because some people look at it and like you said, think, oh, it, it's an offence to the photographer that you said it, but they're not thinking about the no. photograph or the, the art. They're just, as you say, just their judging face. their face. Yeah. But to some degree, the photographer's got to control that and, and work that. So yeah. So, and sometimes their face looks incredible. They're just being silly. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> they don't. <laughs> yeah. I'm not naming names. <laughs> I'm not saying you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next story. I'm a work from home photographer. One day I get an email via my website. So here's the kind of the, the conversation. Client. Hi, I'm looking for a wedding photographer. So basically we go on to discuss her needs and wants for the day. And the client says, I want a full refund if we get divorced because I won't need the photos. <laughs> so the photographer pauses and says, good luck with your search for a photographer who agrees to those terms. <laughs> That's mental. And we probably should have got Emily in for this because I would love to have known if she's got anybody that's ever come to her and basically kind of thrown out those terms that, you know, I want my money back if I get divorced. That's so silly. That's like saying, I'm going to wear these shoes, but if I break my leg, I want a refund. <laughs> No, <laughs> but then, but in years to come as well, yeah. like in like 20, 30 years down the line, you can get to it and go, yeah, no, I, I don't want these anymore as well. That's insane. How people operate is, is just beyond me. It really, <laughs> really is. Next story. I was taking pictures of an outdoor wedding at someone's house and I had a dog. 
<laughs> humping my leg whilst I was trying to get the shot. No amount of kicking could get the stupid dog off. <laughs> Has knowing how your love of animals and photography, have you ever had any instances where the dogs have not played ball? Oh, always. Yeah, every shoot. <laughs> I because a lot of my shoots are outside as well, and, and Maisie does tend to come with me. There's so many pictures that Maisie's in the shot by accident, and that's fine. <laughs> I can photoshop her out, but we do get the odd kind of cannonball dog bombarding oh, themselves through the photo, and everyone gets wet and all sorts oh, of things. She's yeah. like, want to like shake herself. Yeah. And, oh. oh yeah, we've had chaos, but. We all, everyone I know is dog friendly, so it's, it's not. <laughs> God help anybody that's not dog friendly who comes on a Rebecca photo shoot. <laughs> yeah. Or allergic. Oh my, that'd be worse. No, you can't come. Do you want another story? Always. Bring more on. I was taking a portrait and using a 500 watt strobe. I'm fairly new to portrait photography at this point, and I'm trying to appear professional. I fired off a few testers and decided I wanted to turn down the power of my strobe. So holding my camera in one hand, I was facing the strobe and adjusting it with the other. Yep, you guessed it. For whatever reason, I pressed the damn shutter, tripped the strobe with my face inches from the strobe. I was blinded by the 500 watts right in my face and I got a nice shot of my shoe as well. (laughs) (laughs) The model had a look of concern on her face. I thought, what maybe my eyebrows were smoking (laughs) and I played it off like, oh, it's working fine now. (laughs) And the dogs like that one too. The dogs love that story. George, come here. <laughs> so come that here, I think is a very, very good kind of parable um, for testing your lights by all means, but making sure you aren't inches from it. No, because you don't yeah, look I mean, at the lights. It's not so bad with these lights. So, you know, they're all continuous. They, they don't flash. But yeah, you've got to imagine with strobes, they've got a heck of a lot more power to kind of put through when you press it. <laughs> so yeah, I love the idea of just these smoking eyebrows <laughs> and just go, oh, it's all fine. Carry no, on, no carry problem. on. So speaking of dogs interfering at the shoot, they've just knocked the camera over. <laughs> Right, we're back on track. <laughs> Lovely. Now we've had our interruptions from the dogs. Yes, I just said I love that idea of uh, smoking eyebrows, but have you ever broken a, a strobe whilst out on shoots? Um, No. I've, no, to be fair, I do always worry, especially because I go through a lot of batteries with flash guns and things. And, oh, yeah. Um, it's never ending. I do always worry and I do panic that it's not working. But, I mean, touch MDF. <laughs> 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 it's all worked so far. <laughs> right, let me give you another. Okay, so right, so and to start off. This this is back in the old days when photos were developed on film. You remember that, don't you? Just about. Just about. <laughs> so the story goes that I'm an 18 year old girl. I'm not, but the story is <laughs> I'm an 18 year old girl working one hour photo. How creepy that we've just been talking about that on another podcast. That's bizarre. So she's working at a one hour photo. A college guy, a college age guy, comes in with his girlfriend. They're both staring at the ground, acting very nervous. This generally means I'm going to get asked a particular question. The customer says, do you, um, you know, process pictures like, you know, and she goes, what, nudes? <laughs> He's like, and the customer finds the floor a little bit more interesting. And her <laughs> says, one person in the photo, no touching, no toys, state law. If there's any children or animals involved, I will call the police. Is there anything else I can help you with, sir? <laughs> Apparently the boy shoved a roll of film and hightailed it out of the shop. <laughs> I suppose, like, because nowadays you could do things like that without any judgments whatsoever. Yeah. But if you're going to somebody else, I mean, I know Nick does a lot of kind of more controversial style images that we probably aren't on our <laughs> website. Um, because he does, he's very avid in the LGBT, LG, LGB, LGBTQ. That's the one. Um, there we community. Go. <laughs> um, and he does like to take a lot of nudes in that sense as well. Um, but he developed it all himself. And yeah. I bet it's kind of a motivation to develop it yourself. Oh, I, I, I remember back in university um, that you know, a lot of time, you know, digital cameras were about, or they weren't great really, so a lot of people still shot on film. And there was a friend of mine that, um, unbeknownst to me, I don't know if she'd been doing some sort of kind of personal project, um, but she had been taking some nudes of herself. And so we went to the shop and I, we just, I was just going along with her and she was going to get them, de- um, not developed, they'd been developed, so she was picking them up. Um, and um, she, I was like, I, I didn't know what they were. I said, oh, let's have a look at them. And she's like, no. I was like, what do you mean? No. She's like, no, you can't look at them. I was like, why? She's like, they're very 
personal. <laughs> and it was, yeah, it wasn't until that I'm thinking the bravery of some people to actually to kind go. of go. Because then when you're picking up your pictures, then that, well, potentially that person that's working across the other side of the desk has seen, seen you full <laughs> birthday suit. But would you rather, okay, would you rather know that one, say a maximum of five other people have seen you in your birthday suit <laughs> and you know who they are, you know where they are, you know, or have them on the cloud and potentially oh. not know what's going where? I don't think I'm famous enough for anybody to want to hack my iCloud and leak it. I, I'm yes. not. <laughs> I know, I'm not like Lady Gaga or anyone who's been, I don't know who's been hacked. But yeah, it does kind of uh, present with that unusual um, kind of position where, you know, you're, you're, are you, how comfortable are you with other people kind of seeing you naked in a photograph, whether it's for artistic purposes or not really. But as you say, these days, it doesn't really matter because you know you can take a picture, you can process it, you can print it, and you can do it all in your own home, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I think that'll be the safest option to. Uh, yeah. If you were going to take. I don't even know if like one-hour photos news. exist anymore, really, as well. <laughs> but what, yeah, would you would you go as far that if you wanted like a you know a pro grade print and you didn't have the printer at home, would you be comfortable with sending it off to a company? That's it. Isn't I it? worry because <clears> even <throat> if even if, for example, you took the pictures of me. Not that Stephen does. This doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, where you're sending it to, they don't necessarily know that they're not pictures of yeah of, of you. Yeah. Other than the fact that your name's Stephen, then that could be. Yeah. It could be Robert or you know. <laughs> right. <Bob. laughs> but no, it's a point. Point. You know. You, you. You know. I'm sure. Very. Lots of. You know. Printing companies are very reputable and such as well. But it could just be that that one kind of uh, that that dark horse where they make copies themselves and they have this kind of huge gallery of nudie people on the wall if only there was a film about that oh yes that would be very good <laughs> check out our previous podcast about that <laughs> right let me move on to another story ready, um, George? this is a really good one this is a really really good one um right okay let me go on for a little bit here but concept being that i'm being trained um for a management position in photography studio and the manager training decides uh, to do a session on interviewing potential candidates. So we pull up a few applications from online and basically this person starts calling. So her first call goes like this. So the applicant answers very sleepily. Says, Hello. She says, hi, this is such and such from such and such studio. I'm looking to speak to you about the uh, position that you inquired for. And he's like, yeah, that's me. So initially she kind of put off just by his tone, how kind of, you know, unbothered and you know just carefree so they went on a little bit about the the, you know, the role of the job the hours etc and the applicant said yeah I, I can't work earlier than noon because i need my sleep i need to be gone by four o'clock i don't really like to deal with people so i just want to be the photographer and not the seller people <laughs> how many red flags are going off in your head yeah, at the so minute <laughs> and she so she says well uh, being the photographer you have to engage with clients and tell them where to sit stand and how to pose you know, and our photographers are also the studio sales associates and often selling their own pictures. You know, is that something you're willing to do? <laughs> and he says, yeah, whatever. When do I start? He's like, would you like to set up an interview, you know, with you first just to meet you face to face? Would you be free at one o'clock? And he says, are you serious? I have to come in to see if I've got the job. <laughs> and the fact that the conversation is still going at this point is amazing. Isn't it? Just yeah. And so she says, well, this is like how we like to do the thing, you know, Come in, we can, we can give you a little bit of a, a call and give you a shot at this. <laughs> and the applicant said, well, I have plans today, so I'll call you back at a better time. <laughs> <laughs> how it amazes me that, you know, we both know how hard it is to be photographers. Yeah. And for people, if they are deadly serious, whether this is a very serious person or not, I don't know. It doesn't sound like it anyway. No, but not at all. to pass up such an opportunity because <laughs> you don't wake up till 12 You've got to leave, leave at four. four. <laughs> you hate people. <laughs> Can you? I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of people. I do much prefer dogs. But it, just don't work with people. <laughs> it's incredible. Don't apply for a people position. Absolutely incredible. Right. I think I've got one last one to get through for you. So uh, starting off, this conversation takes place over a messaging system on a website. So the customer. Hi, are you available to come out to such and such uh, to take some photos of my my cars clubs meetup so you know these people that kind of get all their cars together etc it's a photographer says yeah yeah that's fine i can come and do it you know um when are you having it 
he said on the 18th of the month you know how much will it cost and he's like yo that's fine you know i'm available then you know cost depends upon how many hours you need me for and what you want out of the photos etc and the customer's like you know I, I don't know maybe a kind of couple of hours and so basically she kind of goes back and she kind of gives the price and say this is how much it's going to be with travel costs etc and it's like no it's a bit too expensive at the minute i'm afraid um you know i'm a bit broke at the moment and she's like, well, okay, maybe I can kind of come for a slightly shorter amount of time. Maybe you have less pictures out of it. Um, and the customer comes back and says, bummer. <laughs> Do you have a camera I can just borrow <laughs> for the day? I won't wreck it or anything. <laughs> she's like, sorry, I don't lend out my equipment. He's like, I'll be real careful. I'll even give you a $20 bond. He's like, no, I'm afraid I'm unable to do that. <laughs> Maybe you could ask a friend to borrow their camera. He says, nah, they're broke as well. <laughs> and he's like, well, okay, if you change your mind about the schedule, like, let me know. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can I borrow your camera and not the photographer? <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> I, I mean, just trying to think, like, would you rock up to like a, you know, a builder's yard and say, I don't want the builders. Can I just borrow your bulldozer for half a day? <laughs> I'll, I'll knock it down myself. Yeah, it's all right. That's yeah, fine. I'll, I'll give you like a tenner to, to you, know, to, you know, it'll be all right. I won't wreck it. Sort out your building, you know, all your insurance. But uh, but yeah, they're just like a small selection, I'm sure, of the funnies from around the world. And else, please, if you've got stories of your own that you're willing to share, we don't have to put names to it. We can keep it anonymous, yeah, can't we? Can we? Do. we don't. We can just have a laugh at somebody else's expense without <laughs> names. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed it, let us know. You can find more out from um, iPhotography and using all the links in the description if you want to know a little bit about our courses and such. Um, but we'll be back next week with... Um, well, we don't know yet, really, as well. Who We're knows? kind of well, who knows what the who next knows? show is going to be, as well. So, uh, you know, if you've got any ideas, if you wanted to get involved and actually kind of come onto the podcast, we're going to talk about photography, about your own photography. That would be absolutely amazing. You can just drop us an email. Um, that's tutor at iPhotographyCourse.com, and we can talk about you. You know, we don't have to be talking about the funny and silly things that go on around the world. It'd be nice to hear from, from other people and have different voices. Yeah, it? different experiences lovely well yeah you can get us in touch with us by email and by social media as well but for the meantime for myself rebecca and quiet little george who has appeared part way through our podcast <laughs> and fallen asleep on the table oh, bless as it's well. a hard life isn't it being a working dog it's a dog's life in it well thank you very very much anyway thanks for joining us following and subscribing and we'll see you in the next show see you soon